six lesson two. So in this lesson, we're going to be um, applying basically the concepts of the normal uh, distribution to uh, word problems. So the goals for this lesson are to um, find the probabilities given a normally distributed variable, as well as finding data values if you're given a percent. And these are all based off of the word problems that you'll see in the lesson. All right, so uh, let's get started. So the standard normal distribution curve, as we said, uh, we're going to be using that to solve a wide variety of practical problems. The only requirement to use the standard normal distribution curve given a word problem is that the variable in question um, has to be normally or approximately normally distributed. How do we determine whether a variable is normally distributed or not? Well, in this lesson, we're going to assume that the variables given are normally distributed, and usually they'll tell you uh, to make that assumption. However, there are tests for normality that we'll, we'll use um, most likely in the next lesson to determine if a variable falls under the normal distribution. So. Um, in the next lesson, we'll talk about these tests for normality. Uh, the goal is to convert a normal distribution to a standard normal distribution so that we can use the table. This is just sort of a review of the previous lesson. So um, let's kind of quickly uh, review the procedure for finding the area under a normal curve. So you're going to be given a, a value on the table uh, in a word problem, and they want you to convert that to um, to like a z-score. Uh, so the first step is to draw the normal curve, and you want to shade the desired area. The next step, you want to convert the x value that they give you in the word problem to a z value uh, using the formula. Z equals do you take the the data value. Um, you subtract it by the, in this case, this is the population mean, and then that's the population standard deviation. Once you get the z-score, you're going to find the corresponding area using uh, the table that, we, that was provided previously. This was the normal distribution table, um, and if you want to see how it looks like, that's how the z-table looked like. All right, so uh, that's the table that you want to um, use. All right, so let's look at the first problem. An adult has, an a on average, 5.2 liters of blood. Assume that the variable is normally distributed and has a standard deviation of 0 0.3. Find the percentage of people who have less than 5.4 liters of blood in their system. So here they want a percent or a probability. Uh, and they want less than 5.4 liters. So we're going to go do the first step and basically draw the bell curve. So we're going to draw a quick curve here. All right, so remember in the middle you have your um, average. And this right here, that's your mu. And uh, so, and then your standard deviation is this guy. So that's your uh, sigma. So we're going by 0 0.3. That means my next value here is 5.5, 5.8, 5.7, 5.9, 5 .5, 5 .8. and we usually we um, I would like you guys to go three standard deviations on each side. So then this would be uh, 6.1. I want you to practice going by uh, three standard deviations. So 5.2 minus 0 0.3 is 4.9, 4.6, and 4.3. Okay, we got it. Um, we draw, we drew it, we labeled it. Now we're going to shade the area that we're interested in. We want less than 5.4, so that means you're around here. So this is. 
uh, 5.4 and we want less than so that means we're going to shade to the left all right since it says less than all right now we're going to convert this to a z score all right so uh, now this is going to be z equals 0 1 2 3 and so on so this gets converted to this where we have z equals 0, 1, 2, and 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So we got to convert this using the z formula. So we're going to do z equals, remember it's x minus mu over sigma, so x is um, 5.4. We're interested in that, so that's my x value. So we got 5.4 minus 5.2 divided by 0 0.3. So this is 0 0.2 over 0 0.3, um, which is approximately 0 0.67. So that means that this um, value is 0 0.67 and we want to the left of that. Therefore what they're doing is they're really asking for the probability that z is less than 0 0.67. That's what they're looking for, the percentage of people. So this is where we use the z chart. Remember if it's to the left you just look up the value on the chart and then um, that will be your probability. So let's go ahead and look up that value. Has 0 0.67, so that's 0 0.7486. There it is, right there. All right, so 0 0.7486, and they want the percentage of people, so that means this translates to 74.86%. Um, And that is our final answer. All right, so got another problem. So each month, an American household generates an average of 28 pounds of newspaper for garbage or recycling. Assume that the variable is approximately normally distributed, and the standard deviation is two pounds. If a household selected at random, find the probability of its generating between 27 and 31 pounds per month. All right, so uh, we're going to quickly draw the curve. In the middle, we have the 28 pounds. So that's our mu. So let's la let me label that real quick. So our mu is 28. Our standard deviation is 2, 2 pounds. And here, in this case, we have a couple x values, right? We have that x value there, so that we'll call that x1. And then we have this value here, we'll call that x2. So we have a couple different x values here, <clears throat> which means we'll need to do two z-scores. So we'll need um, two z-scores for this, for part A. <clears throat> All right, so 28 is our average and then we're going by two pounds so 30 32 and 34 26 24 and 22 we'll extend that okay uh, and we want between 27 and 31 now you can tell that if 28 is going to be 0 and this is and 30 is going to be 1 on the standard normal distribution and 31 is halfway between 30 and 32 so uh, I'm gonna so we can guess that 31 is going to be a z-score of 1.5 since it will be between 1 and 2 and 27 will be negative 0 0.5 since it'll be between negative 1 and 0 so you'll see this when we actually calculate it so uh, let's shade this area real quick 
between we want between those two uh, values so converting this to the standard normal distribution so 0 1 2 3 -1 one, negative -2 one, negative and -3 <clears throat> all right so this one is here and the other one is here all right, we're, those are the same spots. All right, so now let's calculate those. You're going to see that you're going to get negative 0 0.5 here and then 1.5. So let's calculate that real quick. So we're going to do Z1 first. Uh, Z1 is X1 minus mu. All right, so X1 is 27. So we have 27 minus the mu is 28 over uh, 2. So that's negative 1 over 2 which lo and behold is negative 0.5. So that's our first one. Uh, now let's calculate Z2. So we got Z2 equals uh, 31. That's our X2 right here, minus mu over standard deviation, three over two, which lo and behold is 1.5. All right, so that means that we wanna shade between those two Z-scores. So now really what they're looking for is the probability that Z is between negative 0.5 and 1.5. So Z is sandwiched between those two. In order to find that, remember the procedure from um, the first lesson. For the first lesson, if you want the area between two Z scores, you need to subtract the two, Z, uh, the two areas from the table. So you need to look it up twice for 1.5 and negative 0.5 and then subtract the areas. So we're going to subtract the area on the table for 1.5 and then uh, subtract that with the value from the table for negative 0.5. So let's go ahead and find those values real quick. <clears throat> so for 1.5, that's 1.50, that's 0.9332. All right, so that's our first value. Now we need to subtract for negative 0 0.5. So we need for negative 0 0.50, 0. so that's 0 All right, so now we're going to go ahead and subtract those two real quick. And you get 0.6247. So that is the probability. All right, now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it for more than 30.2 pounds per month. All right, so... In this case, we're going to quickly draw this. Uh, and at this point, we already drew this guy. So I'm just going to draw the standard bell curve. All right, so we're going to go ahead and calculate the z-score here. So it's going to be, we want more than 30.2 pounds. So 30.2 minus the mu. Oops, the mu is not 28, or not 38, it's 28. Over 2. So this is going to give us 30.2 minus 28. Um, that's going to be 2.2. Divided by 2, and we're going to get that value now. Uh, you get 1.1, and we'll change it to 1.10, so we can look that up on the table. So now we want more than 30.2, so when we label this, we want greater than. All right, so we want the probability that Z is greater than 1.1. 1 
Remember that from lesson one, if you want the area to the right, you need to subtract the area from the table. So look up the area in the table and then subtract that area from one. So you need to do one minus the area from the table and the area from the table is the less than probability. Remember the table gives you the area to the left automatically. So that's why I'm using the less than symbol for left. All right, so now let's look up that value. All right, so look, there it is, 1.1, it's 0.8643. So you got 0 0.1357. All right, and that is your probability of finding someone randomly uh, that generates more than 30.2 pounds per month of um, garbage. All right. <clears throat> so number three um, is saying that we have a PC with 120 watts of electricity per hour uh, based on four hours of use per day. So they tell us that it's normally distributed and they tell us that the standard deviation is six. This problem is a little different now because it's saying if 500 PCs are selected, approximately how many will use less than 106 watts of power? So it's a little different because they're not asking for a probability, they're asking for how many um, in this example. But we're still gonna treat it as a probability problem. And then we can multiply the probability or percentage against the 500 PCs. So let's go ahead and treat it like a regular uh, normal distribution problem. So we have our mu is 120. Um, that's what it says there. Desktop PC uses that on average. And the standard deviation is 6. In this case, they want less than 106. So x is going to be less than 106. They want less than. So basically, in this case, x is equal to 106. So let me uh, let me just say that x is equal to 106. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and draw the curve real quick. We have 120 in the middle, standard deviation is 6, so 126, 132, and 138. 120 minus 6 is 114. One, oops. 108 and 102. So here they're interested in less than 106, so that means we're around here, and we want less than. So we know it's going to be a small probability. I'm going to convert that to the, to the standard um, normal distribution. And that's going to be a little bit less than negative 2, a little bit below that. And then we're, we want to shade to the left. We need to find that z-score. So we're going to do z equals uh, x minus mu divided by sigma, standard deviation. So that's negative 14 over 6, which is a little bit past negative 2. Uh, should be negative 2.67. Let me verify that. Yep, or 3.3, um, three, three, I mean. So negative 2 point, negative 2 and 1 third. So negative 2.33. So let's label that up here. Now that means they want the probability that z is less than negative 2.33 less than. So that means we're going to look at the value from the table. So 
So negative 2.3. Uh, three. It's over there. So point zero zero nine nine. Uh, so that's the value of that um, guy. Let me double check that. Yep. So in that case, this is about point nine nine percent. So you know, approximately one percent. So we're going to go ahead and multiply this against 500 PCs. So since we have 500 PCs, they want us to figure out how many will be less than. So that means we're going to multiply our percent or our decimal. So 500 times our decimal. And we get 4.95, uh, which rounds to about 5 PCs. All right, so around five PCs on average will um, have less than 106 watts of power. All right, so now the next type of problem is instead of finding the probability, we're finding the original data value. So they'll give us a probability and we have to work backwards to find the original like data value like uh, it could be height or weight whatever it is so in order to find the data value given a probability you need to use the z-score formula and solve for x all right so we're going to show you quickly how to solve for x so this is the z-score formula that we used earlier so we're going to solve that for x by multiplying by sigma on both sides so multiply by sigma that cancels so now we have uh, we're going to write this for one first. Um, so we have x minus mu equals sigma z. All right, now we're going to solve for x, so we're going to get rid of the mu by adding it to both sides. And that gives us x equals mu plus sigma z. All right, and that is our formula for finding the data value. Remember, x is our data value. Um, given the given the z-score, and that exactly corresponds to that formula, all right? And that's where that formula comes from. So the procedure for finding the data value is as follows: so you take uh, you draw the normal uh, curve and shade the desired area that represents the probability, uh, proportion, or percentile. Then you want to find the uh, z. You want to <clears throat> uh, you want to find the uh, z value from the table that corresponds to the desired area. Uh, once you find that z value, then you can calculate the x the x value uh, using the formula that we talked about earlier. This guy. So uh, let's go ahead and show you that process. So number four, to qualify for a police academy, candidates must score in the top 10% on general abilities test. Assume the test scores are normally distributed and the test has a mean of 200 and a standard deviation of 20. Find the lowest possible score to qualify. So they want the score, which means they want an X value. They give us a percent here. They give us a probability essentially. And they said that the test scores are normally distributed, so that means we can use the bell curve. They tell us that the mean is 200 and standard deviation is 20. So we know right off the bat mu is 200, sigma is 20, uh, x is a question mark because we need to find that. So let's uh, quickly uh, shade or draw the curve. So 200, 220, 240, and 260. We're going by 20s on each side. Standard deviation is 20. All right, and they want to find the lowest possible score to qualify. So it says this, the candidate must score in the top 10%. So that means that wherever that top 10% is, so let's... Um, I don't know where that where that z score is or the x value is. That's why we're trying to find, right? So we're trying to figure out what the top 10% is. 
So that means that if we're looking at the top 10%, um, let's just pretend, let's just assume that uh, it's around, yeah, let's assume it's around here. Okay, we don't know what that value is yet. <clears throat> so I'm just going to put that there. And then I know that I have to shade this, whatever that area is, it's equal to about, uh, we know that this area is 10%. Because that's what it says, 10%, which is 0 0.1. Which means that that 0 0.1, the left side is 0 0.9. Uh, and we're going to say it's 0 0.900, and this is 0 0.100. So that means that we're going to go to the table, and we're going to look this value up. All right? So we're going to look this value up. So let's go to the table and look that area. Uh, so we need to go to bigger areas. Remember, when we're doing this, we're not looking up the z-score. We're looking up the area. So uh, 0.9. The closest value to 0 0.9000 is this guy, 0 0.8997. That's the, that's the closest guy. So that means the z-score that corresponds to that is 1.2, 1.28. So that's my z-score is 1.28. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw Oops, uh, let me quickly draw this. I'm going to go ahead and do my bell curve. So 1.28 is around here. And then we want area. Oh, that's it. Okay, so there you go. So we got 1.28. Um, and then this guy is my 10%. Okay, so this right here is, uh, that's my 10%. And this is my uh, 90%, percent point nine. All right, so now that we got the Z-score of 1.28, uh, let me write that over here just so that I won't forget. All right, so now that we got that, we want to find the lowest possible score. So now we're going to use the formula. The x is equal to mu plus sigma z. So we have x equals mu is 200 plus uh, sigma is 20 times the z-score that we found of 1.28. And then we will get our score. And we get about 225.6. And that's the lowest possible score that you need to make on the Police Academy exam um, to uh, qualify, since you got to be in the top 10%. So that's the minimum score. That means you got to score at least that or higher. All right, so now. For number five, for a medical study, a researcher wishes to select people in the middle 60% of the population based on blood pressure. Assuming that the blood pressure readings are normally distributed and the mean systolic blood pressure is 120 and the standard deviation is eight, find the upper and lower readings that would qualify people to in order to participate in the study. So we want uh, the middle 60% of the population So we know we know that our mu is 120, our standard deviation is 8, and we know that our probability is 60%. So quickly draw this. So we got a mean is 120, then and it goes by 8.
and then 96. Okay, so now it goes by, I did three standard deviations on each side. So we want the middle 60% of the population. <clears throat> so we know that the 60% will be, you know, um, you know, somewhere around here, and we know that this is about 60%. And you can guesstimate it, um, but this is about 60%. So uh, I, I'm going to uh, label that. That's 60%. Uh, I'm going to label that over here, 0. 0.6000. So that's what that area is. If that area is 60%, that means that each of the uh, that each of these sides is worth, uh, well, the rest of it is worth 40%, which means that this part right here, is worth 20%. And this part right here is worth 20%. Okay, so basically each side is 20%, which is 40. 40 plus 60 is 100%. It adds up to 100%. The reason why I mentioned this is because we need, in order to find uh, the z score, we need to uh, find out, in order to find this z score, the first one, we need to use 20% uh, to find it. Okay, so we need to find two z scores here. All right, we need to find um, Z1, and we need to find Z2. Okay, uh, uh, let me uh, erase this because we don't, uh, these are not Z scores. We need to redraw. So I'm going to redraw the, the actual um, curve here. Uh, let me redraw it for the Z, for the standard normal distribution. All right, so we need to find Z2 and Z1. All right, so in order to find the Z1, well, we know that this uh, area is 0 0.2000. So let's find that Z1 using that Z-score, uh, using that area, I'm sorry. So let's go ahead and find that area first. Uh, so let's go ahead and look that area up. 0.2000. All right, let's keep going down. So it looks like the closest value, the closest value to 0 0.200 is this guy right here, 0 0.2005. All right, so what, what is that z-score? Uh, so that z-score, uh, let's see if I can zoom out so you guys can see it better. Um, let me change this up. Okay, so there is that value, 0 0.2005, which is negative 0 0.84. Negative 0 0.84. So this value is negative 0 0.84. All right, now let's find uh, the Z2. To find the Z2, well, we know that this right side is 0.2. So that means the left side has to be 0 0.8. So to find the z-score, you know that this part is 0 0.8 because this is 20%, this is 60%, which adds up to 80%. Now we can look up the z-score using 80%, all right? so. We're going to look this value up, 0 0.8000. So what's the closest value to that? We're going to need to go on the positive side, it seems. All right, so the closest value to um, 2.8000 is that guy, which is 0 0.84. All right, so... And lo and behold, it actually happens to be the same value, but uh, opposite sign. All right, so 0 0.84. Now we can convert those into the two x values. So we have x1, so let's do x1 using the z1. All right, so the formula, remember, is 
I'll leave this up here. So mu plus sigma z. So uh, mu is 120 plus sigma, or yeah, uh, sigma is 20, or 8, I'm sorry, 8 times the z-score of negative 0 0.84. And then we're going to calculate the second x value using the same formula, but with the positive 0 0.84. So we get uh, about 113.28. And for the other one, we get 126.72. All right, so those are our blood pressures. So that means that this is the upper reading. And this is the lower reading. All right, so the basically the the patients have to have a blood system, a blood pressure, a systolic blood pressure between these two guys in order to be selected for the study. In order for them to, um, <clears throat> in order for them to participate in the study because they're looking for sixty percent, um, the for, the middle sixty percent. All right, so that is, uh, those are the types of problems that we will be asked in the lesson. I hope you understood this, and uh, good luck, guys.